I've been driving Tesla cars for nine years. And in that time, I've learned a lot about the organization and about the cars. In this video, we're gonna look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're gonna see which Tesla is right for you. It started in 2013 with a Tesla Model S. Then came this Tesla Model 3, which is actually one of the first that came to Europe. And then I drove this car, the Model Y, for the last month. Uh, and I drove it through Germany, Denmark, Sweden, to Norway on a big, long road trip. There's one important thing you have to know about Tesla cars. This four-year-old Model 3 will be radically different than the Model 3 you buy now, both in terms of software and hardware. I'll give you a few examples. Uh, there are now new headlights on the car. The glassing has been replaced, so the car is more silent together with some other upgrades. The steering wheel is now heated, and the back of the car, the trunk, now opens electronically with the push of a button instead of mechanically, which this old car still does. Those are just some of the hardware upgrades. That doesn't change the fundamentals of the cars, though. Let's talk models first. You have the Model S and the Model X, which are the big cars with the big price tags. You buy the Model S because you like the driving experience and because it is a very good looking car. You buy the Model X because you need to transport a lot of kids. But they're both very expensive. So let's focus on the Model 3 and the Model Y. The Model 3 is a little bit lower to the ground and the suspension feels a little bit more aggressive. That also makes it a more nimble car to drive and maybe even a more fun drive. The Model 3 also has the best range. The Model Y gives you a better seating position, which is a little bit higher up. It also gives you a lot of more headspace, especially in the back, and you've got a lot more room for your luggage. The biggest difference, however, is the driving experience, especially over long drives. It is a more relaxed car to drive. Let's first continue with range, and the range on all Tesla cars is great. The supercharger network extends it even further so that long range drives are possible. It's good to know that both the Model 3 and the Model Y charge a lot faster. That's simply because they can get more range out of a kilowatt hour. The smaller charging times are a really nice bonus for the smaller cars. Range is incredibly dependent on weather conditions and especially when you're driving faster or in cold weather conditions, range drops tremendously. That's not necessarily a Tesla problem, that's a generic electric car problem. It is however incredibly frustrating to see range being slashed in half simply because you're driving at minus 10 degrees. Tesla however does not update the predicted range based on these external factors like temperature, driving styles and driving conditions or road conditions. I also feel Tesla could make improvements for navigating over long distances. They often plan very long driving times and long stops for charging. But my driving style is completely different. I like to drive a little bit shorter and charge fast when the battery is almost completely empty. It would be really nice if setting your personal driving styles would be an option in the Tesla software. Now that we've talked about the good, let's focus on the bad and the ugly. It's far more Tesla generic, but it's definitely something you need to know before buying any of these cars. Now let's talk autopilot and full self-driving. Because autopilot is nowhere near autopilot and full self-driving is definitely not full self-driving. Now don't get me wrong, these advanced autopilot features are way better than anything you can find on a Volvo or an Audi or a Volkswagen for example. But they will be disabled if the weather conditions aren't optimal. Even a somewhat dirty car will block sensors and then the features won't work properly. Even if your car is sparkly clean and the weather conditions are perfect, the car will behave strange under certain traffic conditions. Like for example, when there's traffic cones beside the road or it comes across a cyclist, something which will often happen in the Netherlands. Don't even get me started on the strange things autopilot will pull on the highway. You'll be driving 130 kilometers an hour and it will brake without you knowing why or it will slow down because it thinks it's on a 30 kilometer an hour road. You might find some rare Tesla saved my life stories on the web, but the Tesla pull the strange stunt stories are shared among every Tesla driver. You might also notice that Tesla Autopilot is very suited for American road conditions. And the European road conditions are very different. 
and the adjustment from Tesla based on those various road conditions has been very slow. But the second, far more fundamental problem is that Tesla is living in the future. They are thinking Musk time and we are thinking real time. And I'll give you some nice examples to illustrate this. Both the Model 3 and the Model Y only have a center screen and you have to take your eyes off the road every time you look at that screen. That might be okay if you're driving on autopilot, but that future isn't there yet. For now we need a screen in the center or a heads-up display, which would be a far safer solution. A third of the center console is taken up by the space they use to display your car relative to the rest of the road. That's used for auto navigation, but since that feature is often disabled, it isn't that useful. What I want up there is the next turn I have to take based on my navigation, which would be now time instead of future time. It's not that Tesla doesn't get this feedback from their users, and it's not that Tesla after 14 years hasn't figured out what the difference is between Musk time and real time. It's just the fact that they're very stubborn and there's a lot of small stuff. The fact that the metal buckles when you close the frunk, for example, which doesn't sound very sturdy. The fact that the passages in the back can't enable their own seat heating is another one of those. The fact that there's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto support on any of the Teslas. The fact that there is traffic light recognition in beta, but you don't have any speed sign recognition. It doesn't combine well with the fact that Tesla uses the geolocation of the car to determine how fast you may drive, which is often backdated information. The fact that there's no light near the charge ports, so you're figuring out where you need to put the cable at night. Tesla put the gear shifter on the right of the steering wheel, where most European car manufacturers put it on the left or on the steering wheel, which feels like the more logical solution. And a card like this, which is default for a Model Y and a Model 3, simply doesn't work as well as a regular car key, which can also be used to open the trunk or the trunk. Nintendo car sounds. Now that might all sound really negative, but to be very honest, I love driving these cars. We are driving from supercharger to supercharger and you're playing some nice Spotify tunes from the really great speakers that are integrated into the car. Life is pretty darn good. So let's wrap this up. Which car is best for you? The basic Model 3 is a great car to drive and will cost you about 50,000 euros. If you want to spend a little bit more money, need more space, especially when you have young kids, the Model Y is a great option for about 65,000 euros. And if you really have money to spend and you want to spend it on a car for more than 100K, you'll have a Tesla Model S, which is a wonderful car to drive. The one advice that is the same for all Teslas is that you don't need enhanced autopilot or full self-driving. They don't enhance your driving experience at all and they're mighty expensive. So just skip those things. I hope this video helped you out. And if you want to see more Tesla videos, which are mainly in Dutch for now, check out the rest of the YouTube channel. Thanks to Voice for supporting these videos. Voice is the telecom provider for modern businesses. Voice delivers cloud telephony to more than 20,000 businesses in over 55 countries. Start calling today at voice.co. That's V-O-Y-S dot C-O.